Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to focus on the top 10 accessories that I use when I go out to fly my DJI Spark. I'll spend a little bit of time on each of the products explaining what it is, how to use it, and the benefits it provides. Now if you've watched the channel before, you know I do a ton of testing on new products and accessories. Each of the ones that I'm going to discuss in this clip are ones that I use on a regular basis. They're in my kit when I leave for a day of flying, and I can definitely recommend them. Now you may already have some of these products in your kit as well, but I'm hoping if there's a couple in here that I'm using that you haven't seen yet, that through my explanation of what this product does and the benefits it provides, maybe something you'll want to add to your kit as well. Now having said all that, the Spark is a wonderful quad to fly on its own, but each of these individual accessories I'm going to talk about in some way either enhance the protection of the quad or make it a lot more fun to fly. So stay tuned and I'll get into it. The camera and gimbal assembly of the Spark are easily the most delicate and expensive parts of that quad. So it's very important you do your best to keep that area safe and secure when you're transporting the quad or when you're flying it for an afternoon. Now what makes it especially difficult is the camera assembly is mounted so low on the body of the quad that if this is unprotected and you throw it in a bag or you set it down on a surface, if there's any kind of inconsistency, a bump or whatever on that surface, and it bangs up against that gimbal assembly, it could scratch the camera, it could torque out those delicate motors behind here, or it could just transfer debris over to the camera or these sensors above it. So these two products will help you protect it both in flight and when you're transporting it. The first is called a gimbal lock, and what this product essentially does is lock that assembly in place. So it locks the camera facing forward and locks the gimbal in place so it's not shaking around when you're transporting it. And I use this every time I move from one location to another or I put the quad away for the day. It couldn't be easier to use. It's a clear piece of plastic that's shaped to fit exactly over the front of the quad. And you basically just slide it on like this. It clicks into place and it stays on the quad, so it's not gonna drop off. But what it does is force that camera into a forward position and lock it perfectly horizontal with the top part of the quad. And that means nothing can get at that camera. It's not gonna shake around when you're moving it. It comes off very easy when you're gonna fly for the day. When you're done, you just pop it back on and it locks into place. Very inexpensive product, very easy to use. The second one looks very similar, and it's called the Sun Shield, and it's used for when you're flying the quad. And again, this one slides over the front and basically locks in a place like that. You'll hear it click when it locks in. Same color as the quad, so it looks about the same. But when you're flying, what this does is two things for you. The first thing it does is provide a little bit of shielding from the sun on either side that typically will glare across that lens. The other thing it does, which is really important, is when you land this, or heaven forbid you crash that quad, it provides a little bit of a lateral protection on either side of the camera so that if there's debris or branches that you're coming down on top of, it won't hit that gimbal assembly directly. So I wouldn't recommend you test that, but it is on there to protect both that uh, camera if it was crashing or ran into something, and it also provides a lot of sun shielding on the side. And again, this pops off real easy. So when I'm out for the day, I'll fly with this one on. When I'm done for the day, I'll pop that off, take the gimbal lock, line that up and stick it back on. And once that's done, I can put it in my case, and I know that no matter what's inside that backpack, it's not gonna scratch anything. Even if I have a custom case for it, the little foam inside there that holds it in place can break off over time, and that can transfer over to the camera. By having this gimbal lock on top of it, that won't happen for you. So both of these, again, are very inexpensive products, very easy to use, and I've been using these for a couple of weeks, and I like them an awful lot. One of the initial concerns I had with the Spark because of its small size was the limited amount of ground clearance it provided. Now I know the quad is designed to be hand launched and hand caught, but even though I do that occasionally, there are times where I may hand launch it and have to land it later on. And any location that I'm at, typically landing this thing in grass or on a, a hard surface even, it'll kick up a lot of dust and that gets drawn inside the quad. So I've been looking since it was released for a mechanism that would lift it off the ground just to give me an inch or two of clearance. And I've got two separate ground clearance kits here. This first one is a really simple ground clearance kit that just snaps on and adds a little extra height to it. Now the way these are assembled is basically they slide down over the bottom part of the motors and spin to snap on the arms. And you're gonna to wanna to spin those from the inside. So this one will spin on that way, this one will spin on that way, and the same with the set I'm gonna show you next. So basically you put it on top like this, spin it around and it clips on. I'll spin it around and do the other set. Again, put it on top, spin it on, and that's the last one. Now what this does for you is add a little extra ground clearance to keep it up off the ground, which protects the camera assembly in the front. So when I lay it down in the grass, I'm not getting blades of grass up inside there transferring dirt and moisture and other things in there. So this kit works really well. The problem is you can't use this kit with a set of prop guards because 
the prop guards attached to the base of this as well. So a lot of people have said, well, I love the ground kit, but I'd love to have a kit that also gave me prop guards. And that's what the second kit does. The second kit's more of a deluxe kit, which includes both prop guards and the actual clearance kit. And it goes on exactly the same way. So you'll look at it from the bottom. You'll take the first unit. You can see you want to spin it on from the middle, again, from the inside. So put it down over top of it, spin it like that. Same thing with this guy. You want to put it on and spin it like that. This last one will go on here and spin like that. And then the fourth one goes on over here. Now, once you've got those on, you'll notice there are four feet on the bottom of this. You can either fly it with the prop guards and hand catch it, or you can spin these feet down like this. So that's pretty cool that you've got those feet that you can use them when you want them. And if you don't want to use the feet and hand catch it, you can actually hand catch it. But that gives you both the prop guard protection. So if you're outside flying in close quarters or you're near trees or something, this will protect the blades from actually coming in contact with those surfaces. It also provides the additional height. So both of these kits are great. And depending on where I'm flying that day, I typically use these more often than I use these. But if I'm flying in an area where I've got tight quarters or I've got a lot of uh, vegetation, trees, bushes, whatever it is, I'll put these guys on and I'll fly with these for the day. They're far enough back where they don't interfere with the camera. They don't really affect the flight of the quad. And both of these are great little products to have in your kit to give you that little extra peace of mind that you're up off the ground and not have to worry about landing on something when you're out there in the field. These next two accessories have to do with the Spark battery, which in and of itself is a very expensive accessory. These run about 50 bucks each. So you're gonna to wanna to do all you can to protect this thing and take really good care of it so you get as long a useful life as possible out of the battery. Now, normally you'd think, how can I damage the battery? Because it's got a really hard exterior case. You can do that in a couple of different ways. The most common way to damage a battery is to get dirt or debris down inside these contacts. These contacts are really delicate down here. And if you lay this thing down in the grass, or if you put it in a bag and there's you know debris inside the bag or fuzz or whatever, it can get inside those contacts. Now what that's gonna mean initially is you could damage the contacts on the battery. The bigger challenge is if you take that battery that's got junk inside there, slide it inside your quad, you're gonna now transfer all that dirt and debris inside the quad. So as bad as it is to destroy a battery by doing that, moving it over the quad means you could actually damage the quad permanently as well. A Couple of easy ways to take care of that. The first one is to use something like this, which is called a battery guard, which is a piece of custom made rubber that actually slides over those connections. So it pushes up inside the battery connectors over there and it stays in place, which means now those connections are not exposed. So they're not exposed to any moisture, or debris or dirt. And it really protects the delicate connections from becoming contaminated over time by coming in contact with that kind of stuff. Now, I'm still not gonna recommend you drop this thing on the ground in the dirt or the grass, but you've got at least a little peace of mind that those connections are protected inside there. The second part has to do with when you're transporting the battery. Now, if you've got a, a nice case that you carry your spark in and you're gonna put these batteries in some kind of custom fit foam where they're gonna hold them in place, you're probably okay. But light bulb batteries in general, the ones that are inside this plastic case, can be fairly dangerous if they're abused. So if this case gets pierced or if it gets exposed to the air or if it gets wet, there's a chance that those batteries, those lipos inside there, can spontaneously combust. And a lipo fire is fierce. When it starts, it burns until all the chemicals are gone and it burns insanely hot. So that's not something you wanna be dealing with. So the second thing I use a lot are these lipo safety bags. Now what this bag will do is allow me to slide the battery inside of it very easily. And then once I have it inside of it, I close these two flaps and close the top. And this is a fire retardant bag, which means God forbid something happens to that battery inside there it's gonna burn inside the bag and it's gonna minimize the amount of damage that happens outside the bag. Now again, it's a rare thing to have a lipo fire, but having a bag like this, which is a really inexpensive option, means that I'm doing everything I can to protect the battery inside, but more importantly, protect me and my family outside if this thing decides to go non-linear. And again, inexpensive accessories that are easy to use, but for me, when I travel with the Spark and I've got it in a backpack, I use these for all the batteries that I'm gonna put in there. And again, I just slide this little piece of rubber over top of the contacts, slide it in the bag, and I know I'm good to go. Now, the kit comes with three of these, so you can you protect up to three batteries with the battery guard kit. It also comes with a piece of rubber for the spark, because if you're transporting the spark with a battery in it, those connections are protected. But anytime you take the battery out of it and set the spark down, I like to slide this one over the contacts on the spark, and that way I know that the spark connections are clean, the battery connections are clean. When I slide that battery into the spark, I'm gonna get the best electrical conductivity I can between those connections, which is gonna allow me to fly that quad and not have to worry about problems. This accessory can help to improve your flying experience by providing a more reliable connection between your Sparks remote controller and whatever phone or tablet you're using to fly. Now, before I get too deep into the accessory, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the science behind it. 
Essentially, your Spark remote control creates two Wi-Fi connections. The first one is a tethering connection between the remote and whatever phone or tablet you're using. The second connection, which is also Wi-Fi, is between the remote controller and the spark that's downfield. Now that second connection is incredibly powerful. You have a specialized transmitter inside here, two high gain antennas, which is why you can fly that spark over a mile away. That first connection is largely dependent on the Wi-Fi chipset inside the phone. So because you can use a lot of different phones on it and different tablets on it, some are better than others. And if you've got one that is not that great, that connection can drop out, it can be slow, and you'll see things like stuttering video, maybe you'll lose connection with the quad, and people get very frustrated by that. This accessory allows you to eliminate that Wi-Fi tethering connection between the remote and your phone. Essentially what it does is connect up to the bottom of the controller, and then you connect the second part of it up to the connection on your phone. And again, these cables are available for both iPhone products and for Android products, both USB-C and micro USB. But the cable itself consists of two different parts. So you've got the cable, which in our case, we've got a nice little right angle on one end and a full-size USB on the other end. And these come in 20 centimeter and 30 centimeter length. So if you're using a tablet adapter, you need the longer one. But the second part, which really makes the magic happen, is this OTG adapter. And we've tested a lot of these different cables out there. Not all of the OTG adapters work the same. Some work, some don't work. Some are kind of intermittent. This kit works really, really well. And I've used it for a couple of months and it's been rock solid. Now I use an iPhone product when I fly or I use an iPad product when I fly. And I find that the Apple products tend to be a little bit more reliable than the Androids, but I've still had issues on occasion with those. So every time I fly, I make the connection over this hard wiring and eliminate the need for that Wi-Fi. If you have an Android product, chances are you've suffered from this a couple of times already. This cable will take care of that problem for you. And again, it couldn't have been simpler to use. The only thing you have to remember is that the OTG end, the part that has the adapter on it, has to go into the controller and then the other end plugs into whatever device you're using. But by eliminating this Wi-Fi connection between the controller and your phone, it just allows you to fly further. And it's not like it improves that Wi-Fi between the controller and the remote. What it does though, is it improves the connection between the phone and the controller. So the glitchy information that you would get when you're flying pretty far away because of the delay doesn't happen when you use a cable like this. This next product is called a prop stabilizer, which is a clever little device that'll help protect your spark propellers during transport. One of the things I love so much about this quad is how quickly I can pull it out of a bag, power it up, and get it up in the air. And I know their tagline when they released it was seize the moment, and that's exactly what it allows me to do. I can become spontaneous, power the thing up, and capture that perfect image without really giving it much thought. They've also built it to be incredibly portable with these folding propellers that line up against the body. It means that the footprint it creates is small enough where I can put it in almost any bag I'm taking along for the day. I don't even have to think whether I want to bring it with me, it just goes in the bag. The challenge is these propellers are largely unprotected when it's in the bag. Now, if you have one of those custom cases where you've got the cut foam, the laser cut foam, and it sits down inside of it, you're probably going to be okay. But I've still had it happen where they've spun out, I've closed the case on it, and they get bent inside the case. But if you're throwing this thing in a backpack, even if you're careful to line those things up with the arms, the minute you put it in the backpack and it falls down, you can see how those props spin down, and now they're totally vulnerable. They can get snagged on something. If you're up against heavy books or whatever, it can push the props in, it can bend the props, it can damage the, you know, with the extra torque, it can damage the motors. So ever since I've been flying this thing, I've been looking for a way to sort of keep those props stable when I pack it away for the day. And I've tried probably a half a dozen devices. Some of them are kind of wonky Velcro arrangements. Others are plastic things you clip on there. But all of them kind of fell short because they're either too complicated or just kind of a wonky way to do it until I came across this device. Now, it's a really, really simple device, but it's incredibly effective. And the way you use it is you clip it on the top of the spark into the vent holes for the exhaust. And once you do that, you can spin the propellers around and they lock into a channel on each of the four corners. And once you lock them into that channel, they're in there for good. So it takes about 10 seconds to put it on. Once it's in place, you've now got sort of a unibody construction where they're not spinning out. Now, what was different, a couple others look like this, but they didn't have the fingers that extended over top of the propellers. So I found that once I stuck them in the channel, they would still pop out during transport. These aren't going anywhere. It's not gonna shake loose, it's not coming off. So I feel really secure that when I put these things on, put it away in its case, those propellers are gonna stay where they are. And because those arms are long enough, even if there's additional weight on top of the propellers, it's not gonna bend those propellers. So it's a really nice device. When I'm ready to fly for the day, I just reverse the procedure. I push down gently in the arms, spin the props out of the way. What did that take me, 10 seconds and I'm off and flying. So for my money, this is a really inexpensive accessory, which looks like it might not do much, but it's incredibly effective to help protect those propellers.
This accessory is another easy way to improve your flying experience by increasing the signal strength between your controller and your quad flying downfield. It's called a range extender. The physics behind this is pretty straightforward. What this device does is create a parabolic reflective surface that sits behind your antennas and that'll redirect a lot of the wasted energy that would normally be coming back towards you downfield towards your quad, increasing your signal strength. It doesn't actually amplify the signal, it just redirects a lot of that wasted signal, effectively making that connection a lot more rock solid. It couldn't be a simpler device to use. You open it up, slide it over top of the antennas, and once they're in place, you would use the remote just like you would normally. So once I get these guys on here, you can see that I still have the ability to move the antennas as I need to to redirect them. The other thing it does for you, which is really important as well, is that for these antennas to operate correctly, they should be perfectly parallel. They should be right against each other like this. If you have them a little out of parallel or a little bit wonky facing each other or folding down, you're gonna get less signal out of the unit. So it does two things. It redirects the signal downfield. It also forces those antennas into the perfect parallel position, ensuring you get the maximum signal transmission out of that uh, controller inside there. And again, they go on very easy. They come off very easy. What I like about this set so much is that they fold in half. So it's a very small footprint when I put it back in my case. And I've done a lot of testing on this. I know there's a lot of, a lot of opinions out there about whether these things work or not. This is a very solid physical principle. It's been used for ages. It actually is used in flashlights. It's used in dish antennas. If you guys are out driving around, you see antenna, big towers with antennas on them, you'll see parabolics on there. So the, the principle behind this is rock solid. And for me, what I notice mostly is not that I can fly twice as far, but it's even when I'm flying in close, that additional signal strength allows me to avoid the breakups I used to get when there was an obstacle between me and the quad. So if I'm flying like in a heavily wooded area and I go behind a tree for a second, I used to have dropouts. By using something like this, a very simple passive reflector, it increases that signal strength so much that I can fly reliably now around objects when I'm in close, and it does give me a much more reliable signal at distance as well. And again, a very inexpensive device, something I've been using for quite some time. This is the newest version of it. I like, again, the fact that I can fold it in half and create a really small footprint. So a great little device to have for your remote controller and will really improve your flying experience. That's all I've got for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching and hopefully you found this clip helpful. If you have any questions at all about the accessories I've covered today or about the DJI Spark in particular, drop them in the comments below and I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. Now, as I said at the beginning of the clip, all of the accessories I've talked about today are ones that I use on a regular basis and I've thoroughly tested them. If you find any of these interesting and want to pick them up, I've got a link below that'll take you to our website and you can support the channel. I also wanted to take a minute and thank everybody, especially the new subscribers that have joined the family. It seems like the view counts are going up and the subscriber counts are going up every week, and that's incredibly inspiring to me to continue doing these clips. I have a lot of fun putting these together, and if you guys are enjoying them, like I always say, I'll continue to make them. Also, if you haven't joined our newsletter, we do a lot of free giveaways on that newsletter and keep you up to date on a lot of changing laws and a lot of new technology coming out. So you can subscribe to that at the link below. We send one of those a month or maybe two a month and there'll be coupons in there and giveaways and all kinds of cool stuff to deal with the hobby. So anyway, thanks an awful lot for all the support. I really appreciate it. And until next time, happy flying.